Hey, what up, what up? This is Pika over here in Singapore, and it is the middle of the night as usual. <laughs> it's um, Friday night, Saturday morning, and this is actually episode 145. I can't even believe it. 150 is coming soon, you guys, and then the end of the year, and then it's 2018. This is just this is going by so fast. I can't believe I've done this many episodes. I can't believe I haven't run out of things to say. <laughs> um pretty amazing. I feel pretty good about this. Um, today was my day off. I got to, I mean, most people think day off, I get to sleep in and do nothing, but nah, you know me, a single mom, I gotta get up and get out and go do stuff. So I had a little bit, dropped off at school, um, started off with my morning, um, live videos, um, but I split them up by accident. It wasn't on purpose. I did the first one, uh, this morning right after I dropped her off on Instagram and it's always about being grateful because for me I'm learning that the more you are grateful for things the more good things you attract so I feel pretty good about that usually I do them back to back because for some reason I don't have the function to be able to share straight to Facebook when it's live so I'm just doing them individually right now because I don't feel like carrying two devices so did that ran back home and decided I was going to declutter everything um, unfortunately, my little girl is uh, very creative, so what I find is she ends up with like a little rat's nest of stuff she's created, pieces she's cut from here, stuff she's glued together, everything kind of like stacked in a pile in a corner of the room. So I had to go through all of that. I think I finally threw out like three bags of just paper that wasn't really being used. Um, Knicks, knickknacks, broken toys, like all kinds of stuff. I threw all that out, and then I went through a couple of the rooms and um, gathered together all of the like the old clothes that she doesn't use anymore, and um, basically just delivered them to the Salvation Army today. I think I had like five bags of stuff to deliver to the Salvation Army. So hopefully, someone out there will have a great Christmas because I was able to donate. At least that's the way I see it. Um, what else came back? Um, Watched a couple of videos that I needed to watch, took some notes, um, watched a couple of movies just for like inspiration from the universe. And what I'm finding is for every next level in my life, it's demanding a different me. It's almost making me um, adjust my personality, adjust the things that I do, like my, my habits, my routines. Lately, it's been um, an effort to to level up as far as getting her ready for school. She says primary one next year. And next year is like not like next year, 100, 365 days away. It's more like um, in three weeks. We got to level up or else. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been pushing her to get up a little bit earlier. I've been trying to gently get that going because I don't want to force it. I don't want it to suddenly become something she has to do for a couple of days and is able to, and then it kind of catches up with her and kind of kicks her in the butt a little bit. So gently, little by little, we're trying to make it a little bit earlier. Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. I um I actually went to bed earlier this evening with a major migraine and woke up when my daughter kind of like moved around in the bed and knocked my phone off the bed. So it scared me half to death, and I got up and was like, oh, shit, you know, I need to go do my podcast. So here I am. But yeah, so like I was saying, um, I need to level up. So it's all the learning curve. We were talking about mistakes and failures yesterday and how we just, you know, little by little, we try it, we see what works, we see what doesn't work, and we just and keep going, right? Um, maybe that was the day before. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, waking up early is great and everything. It's hard enough for me to wake up at six something because I go to bed so late. Um, but on top of that, what I'm finding is, little by little, um, it really depends on me in the morning. I've gotten her down to a sign. So once she wakes up and once she's actually really awake and is able to go take a shower or wash up in the morning and have breakfast, it's really simple. I can get her ready within a half an hour. As in, like, um, from the minute she rolls out of bed to washed up, dressed, fed, and with her shoes on ready to leave the house. Within a half an hour, which isn't bad, I think. I think that's pretty good. Um, but if I'm not ready, if I'm not showered, if I'm not dressed, if I haven't eaten, if I'm not showered at least, by the time she wakes up, it becomes like 
a longer process. That's what I'm finding. So I'm going to have to wake up much earlier than 6.30 if 6.30 is when I need her to wake up so that I can get her out the door by 7. So, yeah, it's it's pushing me to be a different level, a different version of me. And, I mean, this is true all the way around my life. Uh, every time I moved to a new school, I had to use what I had seen from the previous school in order to kind of adjust my personality so I'd be more well-liked. Because that was the goal at the time, you know. The goal was to fit in rather than to stand out. Now it's like, you know, how can I be different from everybody else, right? But back then it was like, please, please, how can I be just like everyone else so I don't get bullied, so I don't get picked on, so I don't become a target? Um, So, yeah, when the goals change, obviously, everything changes for you too. So that was the theme for me up until 1994, I think. From 1994 onwards, it was more like, okay, how do I not get in trouble with my mom so often? It was getting to a point where I was just like, I don't know, I was in trouble by appointment every day, pretty much. It was a given thing. I knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of when and what was going to trigger my mom. And I couldn't figure out what it was. Like, I wasn't a bad kid. I had trouble listening. But I mean, who didn't? Uh, I got good grades. I did everything I was supposed to. I, I was I was school focused and obviously, you know, I had, you know, boy issues. <laughs> Who doesn't? But um yeah, for some reason I just get in trouble every day. It was just a given. I got I gave up trying to figure out if today was the day or not. I just figured, yeah, today it's gonna happen. It's just a matter of when. Um and so it would it would push me to level up on a different level. It was like, how can I be seen and not heard at home so I don't get in trouble? In college it was different. Um in college, obviously, I didn't have my mom around. I didn't have the rules that I did. It became, how can I get through my schoolwork and finish, you know, my work obligations? Because I was working through uh, to, through college. How do I get through my work obligations and through my schoolwork and still pull the grades that I need to pull in order to keep my scholarship? So that was a different, you know, a different level of who I was as well. So each step of the way, it demanded a different me. Um, once I graduated college, I actually stayed on another year um, as a dorm director. So I was a residence director while I was in college for two years straight. And then I was a dorm director. So as a dorm director, it was different, too. It was like, how do I engage the kids in my in my dorm? I was in charge of 108 girls for a whole year. So the social activities, their mental well-being, their education, you know, just trying to make sure that someone was around in case they needed um a little help adjusting to college life, uh, help adjusting to whatever problems they might face, um, and it was all girls' dorms. It was, you know, it was it was a different, it was a different version of me, and that part of me I was actually really proud of because I'd kind of mastered how to be on campus as a student. So becoming um, a faculty member was kind of an easy, an easy adjustment for me at least. Uh, just managing my day because I mean I don't have classes to go to right. I don't have I have meetings once a week or whatever. So how do I become an active part of dorm life, um, and then also kind of you know manage my after um, my my postgraduate studies actually because I started my master's. I actually got my uh, PHRM certification, professional human resource management, while I was in co- uh, while I was a dorm director. I um, volunteered. Uh, at a nursing home that was right down the street. So, I mean, I did a couple things, you know, I kept myself busy in order to make sure that my mind was always active. So that was kind of cool too. From from postgraduate studies, I actually moved in with my college, um, my college sweetheart, and we'd been together by then. It was, I don't know, five years, four, five years, four years. Yeah. And, um, Moved to Williamsburg. It was it was brand new life. It was brand new situation. I had avoided the real world for so long that suddenly it was you know slap in my face. I had to get a job. I had to be able to pay the rent. I had to be pay you know uh, utilities, get food. It was the first introduction to um, possibly being married. At least that was the goal that I was seeing in the end of that relationship. I would get married to him, and we would you know we would start a family. So um, learning to live with a man, learning to manage our um our household the bills the groceries the laundry you know keeping the house clean stuff like that um eventually I actually got a puppy so then it was you know a family of 3 kind of so you know I had to I had to boss level up 
one more time. And from there, it was it was kind of an easy transition. I mean, you know, us as Asian women, we're kind of raised that way anyway, right? You know, at some point, as a woman in your family, you kind of take over some of the duties at home and you start to learn and manage stuff on your own. So that wasn't so hard. Um, it was different in as much as, you know, I had to learn what he expected and how he was raised and kind of manage his expectations and kind of try and fit in the best way I knew how with the skills that I had at the time. So I had to teach myself how to cook because I didn't know anything about Western food. <laughs> that was pretty interesting. He was pretty, uh, he was a healthy eater. So we used to form and grill a lot to, you know, to grill the meat. So most times I would marinate meat and keep it. And then whenever he was ready, you know, I would fix vegetables and um, some pasta sometimes and then throw in some meat on the grill. So that was kind of cool. It was interesting. From there, obviously, um, we broke up. It was hard on me because I had become an integral part of his family. Um, he had gone off to become a state trooper. And in that absence, I found that, you know, some of the problems we had had while we were in school... Um, I realized had not gone away. So infidelity being one of them, I was, yeah, I'm, I'm not all that fond of that idea, but that's okay. You know, that's just the way it goes. So from there, I had to transition to being single for a little bit. It was weird. I had to move out on my own um, from the, the shared flat that we had. And subsequently, I had a lot of, a lot of tough times from there, actually. I moved into a rough part of uh, Newport News, which was known as the the Big Bad News. And um, that was interesting. So living in a, in a situation where I wasn't always sure about the security of the area, I had to really make sure I locked the doors and locked the car. It was weird suddenly living by yourself where you were used to having a man around the house, so you felt a little bit more secure. So that was, was different. It was interesting. I actually moved into an apartment that I don't know, the previous tenant was a smoker, I guess, so there was, like, smoke in the walls. It didn't matter how many times I washed my clothes. Within a couple of minutes of hanging in the in the cupboard, um, it would smell like smoke. So that was kind of annoying and something I had to get used to. Um, but I also had to adjust to cooking for one, which was weird for me, too. So another, you know, another adjustment to my, my personality, my personal style, the way I did things. Um, eventually, I fell into another relationship. And, um, unfortunately, before I really transitioned, I was evicted from my, my house, my apartment that I'd moved into by myself, um, because I was unable to manage my finances in such a way that it was, you know, responsible. So I had fallen into another relationship where I was putting money into the relationship, but not putting money where I needed to have it, which is like the rent. Um, but I think it was a blessing in disguise because, like I said, it was a smoke-filled apartment. It wasn't very healthy for me. Um, it was in a bad part of town. And like I said, I wasn't used to being, you know, um, by myself in that way. So I got evicted and I found um, some help with some friends. It was a pair of sisters that we were, I was working with. And I ended up moving in with them because they needed, you know, they needed extra help with their bills. So I went from a situation where I was paying all the rent to a situation where I was paying a portion of the rent, which, um, which helped me immensely. And, um, it was, it was different. I was able to move to a better part of the, the area. It was actually right behind where I was already living, but the, it was a little more of a, you know, a privatized community, which was nice. Um, unfortunately I had to let go of my dog because, uh, their, their lease did not allow for a dog. So I actually gave my dog to my, um, to my ex fiance at the time and his family and um yeah moved in with these two girls which is which is kind of cool and it helped me with you know the the new relationship that I was getting into but unfortunately tragedy hit again and we lost that apartment because there was a fire on that floor and it kind of took off the roof in our um because we were in the middle there were three three apartments on the top floor and from one side all the way across t to almost through the other um, the roof was gone. Uh, a, f a plasma TV had caught fire. So yeah, it was it was sudden and um, kind of tragic. I was able to rescue some of my belongings, but not all of them. But I was I was very lucky at the time. Uh, the company I was working for put me up in a hotel for a couple of days so that I could, you know, find another living situation. It was sudden, but once again, I had to level up. So um, it forced me 
to get a little bit more serious in the relationship that I was already in. And we finally got a house together. Unfortunately, again, I moved to a different part of uh, Newport News. Uh, it was like borderline Newport News, Hampton. And um, it was, uh, I wouldn't say a bad part of town, but it was very isolated. Uh, there was no one friendly on our street. And it was um, way back off the main road. And uh, I, I just remember feeling very secluded. It was all the way out in the woods. It was very weird. Um, I had a lot of issues with my new boyfriend's exes who apparently they never just left him alone. So it was a very interesting situation. So once again, I leveled up. He had kids and this is actually the man I married. Um, so that was something that forced me to level up once again. I actually learned how to be a mom. I mean, I kind of had experience. I raised my two brothers. But yeah, I had to be a mom to two children I knew nothing about. They were by two different moms. Um... Picking up from school was easy. You know, making sure I paid the bills was easy. I was used to that already. But then suddenly becoming a surrogate mom uh, was, was different because I had to suddenly learn a lot about their personalities, how they learn, how they do things, what they were used to. Uh, they were used to preferential treatment. So obviously their moms were treating them like individual children, like single children, which is true. I mean, that's the only child for each mom or whatever. But um, in my household... They were siblings, even though they were raised apart. So suddenly I had to get them used to each other, which was hard. They fought like cats and dogs. Um, and I had to treat them equally. I wanted to. I wanted them to understand that in my house there were rules, and the rules applied to both of them equally. Um, I had to learn how to cook for them, and that was major, because they were used to a fast food life. Um, because they were on the go with their dad all the time, they were, you know, they stopped and got food wherever they were, just to make sure that they had, you know, food at a, in a timely manner. So there was no home, so to speak, because both moms didn't like each other. Both moms, um, there, there wasn't, there wasn't a set place that he lived because when I met him, he was living with his ex-girlfriend, his, one of his baby mamas and his brother. And it was a weird living situation because he didn't get along with the baby mama anymore, but she wouldn't leave. And, um, he was basically trying to avoid her, ended up living at his car with his daughter. So that's when I met him, and we kind of slowly moved in together. And um, yeah, so suddenly I was managing a home. Suddenly I was playing wife and mom, and it was a different version of me that was required at the time. So definitely learning what they would and would not eat, because they were used to complaining about stuff, they used to get in their own way, they didn't like the food, they would just tell their dad, and the dad would be like, oh, well, you don't have to eat it. And I'm thinking, yo, <laughs> I spent time, money, trying to make sure that there's food in the house. But, you know, I um, I eventually got to a place where I was able to cook. And it started off with canned stuff that I put together into a meal. And then it became box stuff that I was able to put together into a meal. And eventually I learned how to work the damn oven. So um, I learned to cook from scratch. And that maybe was my greatest accomplishment. Because I was pouring through recipe books. I was absorbing as much food network cooking channel as possible because i mean honestly i was used to grilling meat and throwing together some vegetables and pasta which they were not used to vegetables at all <laughs> their idea of vegetables was you know lettuce and tomatoes on a sandwich or um you know a burger or whatever so yeah that was a major learning curve for me but i'm very proud of it because i feel like i'm a fairly accomplished cook at this point um from there, we moved from that neighbor to, neighborhood to a bigger neighborhood, um, a more suburban area, and it required a different version of me because suddenly I had a house that I could decorate, that I could really, you know, um, make my own, and we had a yard, and we, had, we lived on a cul-de-sac, and it was walking distance to the elementary school, um, middle school, high school. There was, you know, it was a much better neighborhood. The grocery store was right across the street from us, so it was... It was a much better living situation, but the upkeep of the house made me level up once again. So um, I was in a position to go buy furniture and really, you know, just, I don't know, just level up again. That part of, the, that part of my life was pretty interesting. I got pregnant at, in, you know, while I was in that, uh, while we were moving to that house, actually. It was after we had gotten married. Um, so that was, you know, it was more official and my parents were more on board because, you know, 
um, we did the whole, you know, uh, Indian wedding and everything. So, yeah, we leveled up once again. It was very, very interesting. Um, it was good for a while there. I I saw it as the house that both my kids grew up in. I saw it as the house that, you know, my daughter eventually would uh, walk down the stairs in her prom dress in. It was just, the vision was getting a little bit bigger. And I got it down to a science. By then, I was well accepted into my son's mom's side of the family. Uh, we were present at all of their family gatherings. It was the closest thing I had to family at that point because my, my, my husband wasn't that close with his mom. And it wasn't until the tail end of our relationship that she just started accepting me as a daughter-in-law. And even to this day, she you know reaches out and talks to me every so often. Her his brothers, not both of them, but one of them, um, is fairly close to me. He you know he will write every so often uh, since I've left. And um, yeah, it was just a different dynamic. It was more of the dynamic that I was expecting. You know, to be um, in a blended family where everything is well adjusted. The kids were used to living together. That was that was home. Yes, they went back to visit their moms every so often or whatever, but. That was home. That's where everything they owned was. They they lived with me, and I was kind of very proud of bringing them together like that. Eventually, obviously, things broke down. It wasn't the way I had envisioned, and it wasn't the kids at all. The kids and I, we got along great. The kids and I, we knew what to expect of each other. I was able to manage the schedules. I took them to and from school, practice, all of that stuff. We were at every one of my son's football games, cheering him on. Um, I, that part was easy. The marriage part was a little more difficult. The mom part, super easy. That was what I was born for, I think. Um, so once I made the decision to leave my husband, I leveled up again. Suddenly, it was everything was on me. Um, I moved clear across the world um, in an effort to start over, and that that required a different me. But me hurting didn't stop me from having to level up it slowed it down a little bit because I had to I had to deal with the pain I had to deal with my decision to leave I had to deal with leaving the kids behind and that was maybe the biggest thing for me I felt like I was letting them down I mean I had their permission they they had told me it was okay but I just there was a lot of guilt there was a lot of sadness there was a lot of feeling that I'd failed and I had to get over that and even now sometimes when I look back and wonder you know did I did I really make the right decision I feel like I did but as far as the kids are concerned, how can you ever, ever feel good about leaving someone behind like that? You know, like, they were my kids. They were my stepkids, but they were my kids. I raised them. That was, they were, yeah, they were mine. Um, something to note, in Virginia, uh, step-parents don't have any rights. You don't, you have to apply to become a guardian and be awarded guardianship by the state. You have to ask for permission to adopt from both parents. And I knew I wasn't going to get you know, permission from both parents. So I just let it be, you know, just roll with it. But that also means that as a step parent, I can't take them to the doctor and sit inside with them. I can't, I can't get insurance for them. I mean, I can, I can claim them as dependents and make sure that I was covered because, you know, in the U.S. you have company uh, health policies and stuff while you're employed and you can add your husband and your spouse, I mean, your spouse and your children, you know, to the plan just to make sure everyone was covered. But Every year, you know how your kids have to go to the doctors and get shots and stuff to make sure that their their immunizations are up to you know up to um, up to par or whatever. I, I can take them to go do that. I can make the appointment, yeah, but I can go and sit in with the doctor unless one of the parents was present, and that was that was kind of hard for me to take. So when I left, it was it was very difficult to say the least. So I I leveled up once again and I had to adjust everything. See in Singapore, everyone has a nanny. Everyone has like a, a live-in maid um, to help with, you know, the chores and everything. And that was something that was brand new to me because up till then I had done everything by myself. Like I had, you know, slugged it out. I had a family of five I had to cook for. I had lost my job a couple of times. I had to learn how to manage um, on an unemployment check, you know, just stuff like that. So when I got to Singapore, I didn't have a job at all. I didn't have an income at all. And suddenly, you know, my uncles were telling me, no, you need a maid, you need a maid, you need a maid. Your grandparents are getting older, your mom's not around, you have to have a maid. And I was like, uh, okay, so let me try that one time. And I had to learn, you know, the policies with the Singapore government. I'd been gone for like 30 years. There were a lot of things I had to learn. Um, the process of finding a maid was kind of difficult. Um, it made me use Thumble a little bit more because up till then in the U.S., who do I have to speak Thumble with? No one. Um, so I just didn't. Um, 
got a maid, learned to navigate the public transport in Singapore, um, subsequently lost both grandparents. Uh, Mom left Singapore once and for all in Sri Lanka now. My brother left, and suddenly I was in a house by myself with the maid. Finally had to let the maid go. I mean, that part of the story you know already. I've talked about it a couple different times. Um, And level up again. So here I am by myself, in the house by myself, you know, with my baby, and she's in school now, and I go to work, and the commute, and her school, her education, making sure I have food in the house, I don't always cook, sometimes I'm just exhausted, I can't do it, um, so we buy outside, all of it has de- demanded, <laughs> not suggested, but demanded a different version of me, and I think so far I've, I've made it. I've made it work. I've I've adjusted, and right now it's it's demanding a new version of me. So, getting up, making the, sure that she's awake, and um, functioning well at that early time of the day, so that eventually in a couple of weeks she goes to school and she is able to adjust a little bit better is a big deal to me. Um, it's demanding a different version of me. It's demanding more of me, and I and I like that. Um, you're never ready for that kind of change, but as long as you show up, resisting the change is probably the worst thing you could do. It makes it so much harder and that much more um, uncomfortable. Uh, Being a business owner at the moment has has made me level up as well because suddenly I'm juggling responsibilities and um, commitments to other people as well as my 9 to 5, as well as the job that is being a mom and taking care of a household. Um, it's been quite the journey, but I'm enjoying it. It's it's interesting. It's a, uh, I've been in Singapore four years now, and the person I was when I came to the person I am now is like leagues ahead of where I was, and I'm actually really glad. This year has been all about change. Um, this year was the year of the, the rooster. It was my year, and I was ready from day one. From January 1, I was ready. I knew there were going to be big changes ahead. I knew that my maid's contract was up in August of this year, but as luck would have it, she was just ready to go way earlier. So um, from January onwards, I had already had a plan in place for me to slowly adjust to doing everything by myself. And that started off with getting a better job with better hours so that I could be around for my daughter um, and then putting her in daycare because at some point I would have to have her taken care of elsewhere while I went to work. And then from there, I had to let her go. And then I, you know, just slowly just added in little by little. And look at me now. I manage everything by myself. I'm glad that I can say that I can manage everything by myself. I'm actually in a position to help out family members as well. So that is basically the gist of today's conversation, today, tonight's epiphany, I guess. Every new level of your life will demand a new version of you. It just depends on how willing you are to accept the change and go with the flow or how much you're going to fight and resist it and have it just kind of like hit you in the face instead. I find it easier to just face my fears. Yeah, I'm terrified. I'm terrified of her joining the Singapore public school system. You don't understand the nightmares um, (laughs) that most parents go through because the expectations of the child are so high. I've heard, like, since I've joined the tuition industry and learned more and more about, you know, the different exams and um, changes between, you know, the grade levels or whatever, I've heard kids are committing suicide over the stress of, um, you know, the exams, the examinations, the scoring high or whatever to get into the next level, not to be um, streamed into... Uh, a slower track or whatever it is. I'm not sure what the terms are, so I'm still learning. I think it's like an academic, academic, something, I don't know. Um, It's a fast track and a slow track, basically. And they filter the kids out before the PSLE. But I don't know if that's a good thing. I mean, I've always thought that, you know, if you had a blended school where the slow and the fast are in the same classroom, then it's really up to the teacher to make sure that everyone levels up or at least evens out um, that 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 uh, quote saying that, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with means that if you have, you know, gifted kids in the class and not so 
strong children in the class, they kind of even themselves out. The gifted kids should be able to pull the slower kids up a little bit because it's demanded of them. So some of them will level out and some of them, yeah, will fall behind because they're just not capable of coping. Um, they don't have the skills yet. But for some reason, Singapore streams them and it, and, and it pushes them harder and harder and harder. And I don't know. I was looking at some of the math and they have first grade kids drawing out algebra. And I'm over here thinking, damn, I don't remember doing any of that with my my stepson or my stepdaughter until like fourth or fifth grade. Like first grade, there's seven, you guys. There's seven They should still be playing a lot. They should still be, you know, working on reading. I don't know. I, um, yeah, is demanding a different version of us. And I can just feel like winds of change coming. 2018 is going to be a boss year. I'm going to have to really like step up my game. I'm going to have to streamline my schedule so that I can fit everything that I need to fit in. Um, I've been very, very lucky to find out that my tuition center... will allow me to pick her up as soon as school is finished. Like, this girl has to be in school at 7.15. I remember school not starting until, like, 8. <laughs> um, 7.15, and then she'll be out of school by 2 o'clock, which means I can pick her up and bring her back to, to the tuition center with me, where she can finish her homework and just relax a little bit with me. The idea being that I don't want her in, in student care. I don't want her to be away from me longer than she has to be. And if there's a way where she can be with me while she, you know, while I'm still at work, but, you know, she's doing her homework or whatever in a safe environment, then why not? So 2018 is looking already to be like, it's going to demand another version of me. But for now, I'm in training and I'm ready. I really am ready. Um, I'm kind of afraid and excited at the same time, but I'm kind of trying to focus on the excitement a little bit more. Uh, Meanwhile, if you are interested, uh, we're doing the 12 days of manifesting. We're we're learning to use our energy and our thoughts and our words um, to manifest more of the things that we want and learn not to worry so much, not to focus on the things we don't want in our lives. So if you're interested, uh, visit my Instagram page, uh, R-A-S-A-T-H-1. So in the, the links in my bio, there is a 12 Days of Manifesting Miracles link. It's a free 12-day um, training. Uh, many of us from the Crown for Success RVP program are presenting. Um, I'm actually teaching on Sunday. This Sunday and next Sunday I'll be teaching um, what I do to manifest more of an abundant lifestyle. And it's not that I'm like creating magic out of thin air. It's basically a guided meditation to your life. It's how to focus your thoughts, change negative thoughts to positive ones, trying to find solutions and everything, trying to just, you know, master your mindset so that you can see more of the opportunities in your life and focus on the problems and the and the setbacks. So um, with that, I'm just going to, you know, close out tonight's um, podcast episode and hopefully you'll join me again tomorrow. I'm hoping this was of some value to you. And for those of you who are going to go back and do the replay on my Facebook wall, um, I do hope you find time to leave a comment. Let me know if it helped. Let me know if you want more of this kind of information. If you could care less about my day, if you would rather know more about the business side of things, if you would rather not do the spiritual side of things, whatever it is, please, please, please. I look forward to your conversation, your comments, um, your feedback because that gives me an idea of more of what you guys need as an audience. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try and go back to sleep. It's it's 1 o'clock in the morning, and um, wherever you are, I'm hoping this helps you. It helps you understand that, you know, these changes that are pushing you to change who you are a little bit, they're not bad, and it becomes a little bit easier when you see it as a challenge accepted rather than, you know, a humongous obstacle in, in, in your life. It really does help with your mindset. It really does change the way things happen. I love you guys, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Good night.